candidates exam paper area. So this is the proper area. Okay, so then when you come here, you will put your paper here, everything over here. And then in one hand, you will pick up everything and enter the hood. Right? This is the this is the hood. Imagine this is the hood. So you cannot go back and forth. Like okay, I, you cannot do this. This and this and this. No, that's not allowed. Right? So you pick up everything in one hand. Try to do it in one hand, if not one, then two hands. So that you have your procedure over here, and then you enter the hood. Clear? Now, in the hood, we expect it to work somewhere in the middle. Not too much here, not too much here. We say like six inches from both the sides. So six inches is about this much, and this much. So somewhere in the middle. Why not too much inside? Because I don't want you getting into hood and working. You know, no. You should be working this way. Okay. So this is my comfortable position. I don't want to be working here. Should be working here. Sometimes the bag is going to be sealed, so you have to re remember to take off the seal. Whenever you work in a hospital, the bag is always going to be sealed, right? So you have to like remove the seal. So this is how you are going to set up. What I suggest is, after you pick, after you finish picking, uh, there's a there's going to be a small desk over there where you can prepare. So in those two three minutes that I have, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just fold them. See this? This is where the, the syringe is open. Just fold them. Please do not open them. Please do not open them. Just fold them. This is going to save your precious two minutes. The procedure that we are teaching you today is exactly what the state board wants. Uh, the ones that you might have done at your job or somewhere else may be a little different, but this is exactly what the state board wants and how you, the state board wants you to work. Two years ago, I had a case that uh, the student came in with like all the four bags over here and six bottles of drug. Well, that's, that's not allowed, you know, that shows that you're not confident. And then he would come over there and tell me, okay, now which bag do I have to add the drug in? Come on, <laughs> this is your exam, right? So once you are set up, the examiner will tell you, are you ready? And you say yes, and he's going to time you. It's 10 minutes, clear? So, One more thing, the garbage should be either on this end or this end, not in the front. If you keep it here, you are going to block the airflow, right? Oh yeah, we understand it's in a corner, but still, the garbage should go in this corner. This is what you are supposed to do, just clean the top. I don't, please don't do this. Not professional. Just once. That's it. Again, last time what happened is like after you, this bag is open, right? And it's it's touching the, the floor. So after you clean it once, remember to put the alcohol prep down and you put the, the bag poured on top of that. Lot of students forgot that. So that is like a chance for contamination. So please remember to put the alcohol poured. 
under the bank. Right? So then you have your procedure here. At this time, you don't have to use your brain. You wrote everything here. Now, how much ML I have to take? So then you, so now you open the syringe. See, since I fold the syringes, it's so easy. Otherwise, I'll be fretting. You know that my two minutes are gone over there. Clear? Sometimes uh, the syringes have caps. This doesn't have a cap. And all of them have a cap. Sometimes they have a cap. So please. Uh, see that, like, please remove the cap. Now the ports of contamination are this and the plunger, which you are not supposed to touch. Many students last time they forgot to insert air. See, if I am supposed to take 9 ml of uh, the reconstituting solution, they forgot to insert the air. So you are supposed to insert the air first. Again, you can go nice and easy. You know, when you have to take a lot of volume, you don't have to go all the way in. You can just go nice and easy. See this? Please do not, do not touch this, please do not touch this. You see the way I am holding the syringe. The examiner can never cut any points because I am not touching uh, the needle, I am not touching the plunger. Right? I always teach the students like this, you know, these two fingers at the neck, remaining three, here, yeah. easy. If you hold it at the neck and if I have to take all the volume, Right? My needle is above the liquid level, so with these two fingers I can push the water. Is it clear? I can push the bottle and draw whatever volume I want. Right? I always see that students are very confused about air bubbles. Now, I don't have any here, but I'm going to show you a case. There is a test. Like, if there, is, there are like huge 3-4 bubbles, yes, I would remove those. But I, I see like, I see maybe one or two tiny bubbles over here. Don't worry about this. Those bubbles, like if you, you, you'll be tapping for a whole year, they will still not come out. Right? Now how do, you, how do I judge that which air bubble needs to be removed or what, sh what should I do? If there are huge air bubbles, three, four of them, yes, I will remove those. Another test is if I see like a, like a bubble over here, or one, a little huge bubble. Another test is you flip the syringe. If the bubble moves, there is a big error in the volume. Right? If the bubble doesn't move, there is no error in the volume. One other place, okay, see I see a bubble over here. Good. See, this bubble moves. See that? See this? And this is what I wanted to show you. One other place students make a mistake is they always concentrate here looking for bubbles and they forget that there, are, there may be a bubble on the top. We couldn't see the bubble, right? I thought there is a tiny bubble, but when I did the test, I found out that there is a huge bubble over here. Clear? Now why did I get that bubble is because my needle is above the volume, above the liquid level inside the bottle. So what I have to do is just push the bottle. You don't have to go all the way back in. My bubble is on the top over here. While removing bubbles, please hold the needle, hold the syringe and the bottle straight. If you do this, it's not going to work. Why? Because air is lighter, bubble is going to be stuck here. And you'll spend like 5 minutes removing the bubble, you won't be able to get it out. Hold it straight. Clear? So I'm going to push this, push back a little, so my bubble is gone. I'm still not touching the plunger with the other hand. With the other hand, I take the required volume of the dilute. Clear so far? Right? Again, let's test. See, there are no air bubbles. There is a teeny tiny one over here. Don't care about it. Right? So, after you are done, you are supposed to uh, 